Welcome to Holy Trinity Catholic Church in Dallas, Texas. Today we celebrate the 20th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Thank you for your financial support of the parish and our food pantry. Please visit our parish website to set up online donations, see our most current information, and read the weekly bulletin. There is no obligation to attend Sunday Mass, but if you wish to attend a weekend Mass in person, please make reservations on our website or you may call during regular office hours. The deadline is every Friday at noon. And now let us begin our celebration with our opening hymn, Hear Master in This Quiet Place. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Let us pray. O oh God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Observe what is right, do what is just, for my salvation is about to come, my justice about to be revealed. The foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, ministering to him, loving the name of the Lord, and becoming his servants, all who keep the Sabbath free from profanation and hold to my covenant, them I will bring to my holy mountain and make joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be acceptable on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The word of the Lord. God, let all the nations praise you. Oh God, let all the nations praise you. May God have pity on us and bless us. May he let his face shine upon us. So may your way be known upon earth, among all nations, your salvation. O God, let all the nations praise you. May the nations be glad and exult, because you rule the peoples in equity. The nations on the earth you guide. Oh God, let all the nations bless you. May the peoples praise you, O oh God. May all the peoples praise you. May God bless us, and may all the ends of the earth fear him. Oh God, let all the nations praise you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I am speaking to you Gentiles. Inasmuch as I am the apostle to the Gentiles, I glory in my ministry in order to make my race jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? For the gifts and the call of God are irrevocable. Just as you once disobeyed God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, 
so they have now disobeyed in order that, by virtue of the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God delivered all to disobedience, that he might have mercy upon all. The word of the Lord. proclaimed the gospel of the kingdom and cured every disease among the people. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not say a word in answer to her. Jesus' disciples came and asked him, Send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and did Jesus homage, saying, Lord, help me. Jesus said in reply, It is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She said, Please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. Then Jesus said to her in reply, O oh, woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And the woman's daughter was healed from that hour. The Gospel of the Lord. I welcome all of you who have joined us in this spiritual communion today, Holy Trinity Catholic Church in Dallas, Texas. We are so privileged that we are able to gather, even in this context, to give praise to God for all the ways that he has blessed us and to ask, as this woman in the gospel did, for mercy for help, knowing that Jesus does hear and answer our prayers. For the past few weeks, it's been interesting to give a homily because Jesus already gave the homily in the gospel. You know, when he was talking about the wheat and the weeds and he comes back and the disciples say, explain this to us, so he does it. And 
okay, as a homilist here, what am I supposed to do? After Jesus has already given the homily, kind of hard to one-up Jesus. Oh, how I wish that he had explained this gospel because it's so troubling to hear Jesus saying those words. It's not right to throw things to the dogs that belong to the children. Ugh, ouch. What in the world is the message for us to take from this gospel? Certainly this woman's pithy response, even the dogs get to gather the scraps from under the table, uh, has great merit because Jesus, of course, says, wow, you really have faith. But, and I read this in a scripture commentary, um, so this is not my original thought by any means, but that Jesus was actually mirroring what the disciples were already thinking. This is a Canaanite woman. She doesn't count for anything. Make her go away. Who does she think she is anyhow? Canaanites are pagans. We don't have anything to do with them. Why should we be worried about her little problems? There was this sense that no way does she belong or does she have any invitation to be a part of who we are? And so Jesus mirroring that animosity refers to her as a dog, knowing full well that that's what not only his disciples, but the people of Israel viewed these Canaanite people as unworthy, unclean. You couldn't even touch them. You weren't supposed to have anything to do with them. And here he is. What the world is he going into Canaanite territory? Tyre and Sidon? This is outside of those boundaries that were claimed for the children of Israel. Why is he doing this? Then Jesus does something extraordinary to model for the disciples what it means to be a follower. Faith. She believed. She called out to him, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. In the sacred scriptures, this would not have escaped the disciples' attention. Because son of David always referred to the Messiah. And so here she is, this Canaanite woman, this pagan, affirming his role as the Messiah. Right in front of the disciples. Imagine the risk that this Canaanite woman was taking with her own people to have her calling out to Jesus? Wouldn't that have put her in jeopardy with her own people? What are you doing? We don't belong to them. That's a whole nother thing. What are you, you've betrayed your people. And yet, she's persistent in calling out. Please help me. Please help me. And she does that because she believes that Jesus can help her. Her witness, her persistence. Are we persistent in our prayer? Sometimes maybe we don't get the answer that we had hoped we would get. Maybe sometimes we feel like instead of in our prayer a door opening that a door gets slammed in our face. Maybe sometimes we're disappointed in the response that we think we've received from God. How could this be? And yet to stay persistent 
to continue to trust, to hope, and to believe. That's our job. That's how we give witness to the presence and power of Christ in our life. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Recalling the faith of the Canaanite woman in today's gospel, we lift our hearts to the Father with assurance that our prayers will be heard. For the church, may the grace and mercy of the Holy Spirit continue to strengthen her in faith and unity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations throughout the world, May God grant them a spirit of reconciliation and collaboration. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, consecrated, and religious life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are recovering from hurricanes, wildfires, explosions, and other disasters, that God will ease their pain, give them strength, and renew their hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to racism <coughs> and prejudice, that God will turn hearts and change minds so that everyone may be respected and their dignity affirmed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders and school administrators grappling with back-to-school issues in the shadow of the coronavirus, may the Holy Spirit guide them in their decision-making let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, may the Lord look upon them in his mercy and bring an end to the sickness and divisiveness brought about by COVID-19. We especially pray for Bill Pittman, Helga Feldman, Dolores Obter, Kevin Davis, Christopher Bozinski, Louis LeBlanc, Dick Myers, Nolan McVicker and Richard Dethridge, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, may they experience the mercy of God and rest in his eternal peace, especially for Charles Dries and Nicole Ballion, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts and for our intentions spoken and unspoken, and for the intentions of the weekend masses, Carol Warmath, Marilyn Paul, Father Anselm Walker, and the parishioners of Holy Trinity, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father of mercy and love, you have extended your grace to all who call upon you. Hear our prayers, for we offer them through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured 
his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you and eat of it for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously, grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said, to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body and blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. I want to thank all of you who have joined us today as we pray together. We certainly continue to pray for healing in our community. We pray especially for a cure for this horrible virus that has basically um, affected every person on the planet. We pray for a vaccine. We ask God to give us the wisdom to know what to do next that's going to be helpful. What's going to bring us closer to him in our prayer when we cry out, Lord Jesus, have mercy on us. I want to encourage all of you um, to continue uh, with your online giving so that our parish may continue the good works that God has entrusted to us. Like every parish in the country, we are um, lacking in our offertory collections. But we've been blessed, um, particularly because only about $4,000 a week is how much we're down in our collections. Many parishes have just been decimated by this. And so I encourage you to um, please continue giving and know that, well, while it's, you think, only $4,000 a week, it's starting to add up. And again, what do we do with the resources that we have? In this parish, we put them always in the service of the poor and those who come to our door for aid. Our food pantry is um, inundated right now with clients as well as our St. Vincent de Paul Society. A new pandemic is emerging, a pandemic of homelessness. And so this requires all of us, I think, to get more and more involved in the mission of our church in serving the poor. So again, I encourage you uh, to keep that momentum that we have going here at Holy Trinity, a momentum that began in 1905, um, always in the service of the poor, knowing when we serve the poor, we serve Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thanks, thanks to God.